A good morning, everybody. Now, it's been less than four weeks since King Charles III was um, crowned in his big coronation that everyone uh, watched around the world. And he's decided to honour someone who is quite deplorable, who is Jacinda Ardern, who is the former Prime Minister of New Zealand, of course. She was the Prime Minister of New Zealand for um, nearly six years from 2017 until she stood down earlier this year in 2023. But uh, King Charles has decided to make her a dame. And the actual title is, well, she's a dame grand companion of the New Zealand Order of Merit. Now, apparently that is the highest honour that you can receive as a citizen of New Zealand. Um, they are fellow uh, members of the World Economic Forum. Uh, King Charles, uh, when he was Prince Charles, obviously for many decades, attended the World Economic Forum meetings, uh, was photographed many times with Klaus Schwab and said that uh, this is a chance for a great reset at the beginning of the uh, COVID period. Um, Jacinda Ardern, of course, is also uh, a member of the World Economic Forum. She was indeed a young global leader, uh, one of these people that Klaus Schwab celebrates as penetrating the cabinets of governments all around the world. Well, she wasn't penetrating the cabinet. She was became the leader of the nation, therefore in a place to put in, in, uh, in, in, it said in order, the World Economics Forum's uh, programs and the Great Reset and so on in New Zealand. Now, why this is particularly deplorable is her record or the record of her government while they were in government. And there are so many things that happened in New Zealand, which happened around the world as well, um, but were very extreme and, and absolutely abhorrent, uh, I think. First of all, the lockdowns themselves uh, in 2020, uh, after the COVID uh, era started. A lot of it was flu, but never mind. But the government policies uh, were put in place to put uh, in into to, to put the lockdowns into place, and the lockdowns in New Zealand were very very harsh, more harsh than many many places. I mean, you you couldn't even leave or go into the country. If you left the country, you couldn't get back into the country. Um, with lockdowns, they pretty much just stopped travel. And um, anyone coming back would have to go into a very severe quarantine, which they'd have to pay for themselves. And if they didn't get tested with one of these horrible sticks up the nose uh, twice, then they would be forced to stay in quarantine for another quarantine period until they, you know, capitulated and got the sticks up the nose, um, which didn't work anyway. These PCR tests were found to be... Um, you know, not viable uh, and, and with so many false positives because they just said that people had this illness even when they were asymptomatic. That was what was going on in New Zealand. And uh, the people who were out protesting um, against the lockdowns, quite rightly, because civil liberties had been taken away, uh, which are a right of everyone around the world, those people were brutally... Um, suppressed by the New Zealand police, just as they were in London, as I've seen, in, as I was on the marches in London uh, against lockdowns. And, uh, you know, I've spoken about that many times. And I think it was even worse in New Zealand than it was um, in London. Then there was the injections. The injections came along and... Um, <clears throat> She was asked in a media interview, are, are, is this going to create two classes of people, vaccinated and unvaccinated, with different rights? And she said, yes. And that was a good thing. She was celebrating the fact that this medical apartheid was going to be brought in with uh, coerced injections. And if you chose not to get an experimental injection. Your rights would be taken away from you. And here's the Prime Minister 
of the country, uh, Jacinda Ardern, um, smiling and laughing and celebrating this fact that uh, unvaccinated people would have fewer rights than people who capitulated and got the injection of experimental mRNA. Absolutely deplorable. There's a couple of other things which are unrelated to the whole COVID era that are also utterly deplorable that her government brought in. In 2020, uh, they changed the abortion laws in New Zealand to make abortion up to birth legal. Up to birth was 20 weeks before and they changed the law to legalise it up to birth. Even people who support abortion, I don't, I'm pro-life, but even a lot of people who support abortion think that allowing abortion up to birth is absolutely horrific. Uh, and it is. And that was brought in on her watch. Another thing that she's done is what um, the LGBTQAPIPP alphabet people are pushing for all around the world, which is a ban on conversion therapy. Um, even though the things that they say are horrific are already banned, things like electroshocking and so on, those things are already banned. But what they want to do is ban prayer, counselling, talking therapies, pastoral care, even conversations, or people giving opinions or having chats to their children about um, LGB alphabet issues. Um, and they're conflating these two things uh, by saying, oh, conversion therapy is horrific. Well, yes, electroshocking and corrective you know, violations, to use that word here, uh, they are shocking, but they're banned. So you don't need any new legislation for that. But what they've done is they brought in this legislation in 2022 called the Conversion Practices Prohibition Act. And this bans people from just offering counselling, prayer, pastoral care. And it could be even be interpreted to criminalise parents whose child comes home from school after being uh, indoctrinated in a session by some alphabet people and they're a boy and they come home and say, oh, mummy and daddy, I'm not a boy anymore, I'm a girl. And, you know, if you're any normal parent, you would deprogram your child at the moment and take them away from the school that has put this gunk in their heads. But this law prohibits that. It would make you a criminal as a parent if you say to your child, don't be ridiculous. You can't change your sex. You're still a girl or you're still a boy. That would be illegal now with a sentence of up to five years in prison. This is a complete uh, undermining of free speech and just common sense that everybody now has to affirm the, the gender affirming model, whatever the alphabet people say, you have to go along with it. And this is not about them having extra rights. This is about them being able to put people in prison who disagree with them, even though what they're saying is absolute nonsense. That's been brought in and that's been made law now in New Zealand. This is one of the most Orwellian uh, attacks on free speech uh, that has happened anywhere in the world. And it's been pushed all around the world. It's been pushed here in the United Kingdom as well. But there's a lot of resistance to it. You know, I'm, I'm happy um, to be one of the first people to speak out against this and say, no, this can't happen. It shouldn't happen um, because it's trying to undermine free speech. <clears throat> and it's being sold to people on the basis of, oh, there are victims when there aren't any victims. Nobody is electroshocked anymore. And uh, they're just trying to um, cancel people's legitimate opinions and scientific facts that there are two sexes uh, rather than a hundred genders and you can't change your sex. So that's another thing that Jacinda Ardern's government has brought in. I must say with the... Um, compliance of the opposition because the vote in the parliament there to bring that in was 112 votes to eight 
there were only very few, very few um, MPs there who who voted uh, against that, even in the supposed um, sensible or conservative opposition. You got fake conservatives in New Zealand, just like you have uh, in the UK. So those are some of the things that she'd done or she has done in New Zealand and her government has done, which are utterly deplorable and which any sensible monarch would use to rule out giving someone an honour. Because if you're honouring someone like that, you are honouring tyranny. You're honouring lockdowns. You're honouring medical apartheid. You're honouring an attack on free speech. You're honouring killing babies up to birth. That's what you're honouring. That's what King Charles III is honouring by giving Jacinda Ardern this damehood. And it is an utterly deplorable act. The people who should be honoured are the people who stood up for freedom, who went out and marched on the streets against the tyrannical um, policies and acts of that Ardern government uh, over the years, and who stood up against medical apartheid and were willing to be uh, brutalised by the police as they turned into uh, a terror state police for a couple of years. And that will come back if we don't uh, keep vigilant. So this act of honouring her is utterly deplorable and um, it is not a good sign that this has happened just a few weeks after King Charles III uh, had his coronation.